Hey, it's Dry Bear. Power World has been busy releasing tons of quality of life features, new updates, and new content. And we just got a look at the teaser for the arena mode, the 3v3, which will be the first ever non-modded built-in PvP option for Power World for both you and your PAL teams. On top of that, they've been touting a huge summer release, which is just about upon us, which will bring a brand new island for exploring, upwards of 50 new PALs to capture and tame, new buildings, weapons, and more. Now, being that Power World loves to do the augmented version or the elemental version of PALs, the 50 PALs is more likely to be maybe 10 to 20 new unique PALs and then a bunch of different variations on those PALs. In fact, in the trailer for the arena, we saw a green looking Quivern, which actually could just be a grass version or something else. And if I were a betting man, the new island is probably going to be that giant tree that we've seen just outside of our reach in the northwest corner of of the map that we've never been able to reach without mods and overall should be a good time. But while you're waiting for the arena and the brand new major summer update to land, they've actually been diligently working on the core game itself, adding a bunch of new stuff that you may have not checked out just yet. The biggest feature is the addition of summonable raid fights. The new pal Bella Noir is a brand new raid fight that you can summon in your base to take down with a bunch of pals. And to my surprise, she's actually quite difficult to take down. She has three different difficulty levels, the normal version, the Bella Noir Libero, which is level 50, and then there's a one above that, the Bella Noir Libero Ultra, which is even harder than that, and she has like 900,000 HP, takes a bunch of really high level pals and potentially even legendary weapons from you in order to take down. To summon her, you will need to run the dungeons to get any of the three different types of fragments. At the end of dungeons, these dungeon chests at the end have the highest chance of dropping the fragments that you need to craft the slabs. Once you acquire any of the fragments, the recipe for the slab will appear in any of your crafting assembly lines or crafting benches. Then you'll just need to take four of those fragments, combine them into a slab, and then take them to a summoning altar. Summoning altar is one of the new recipes available in the technology tab under ancient technology. You just need to go down and use your ancient technology points to unlock the summoning altar. And then this summoning altar needs to be placed inside of the area of a PAL box. So it needs to be in a base itself, but you need to be careful because on on summon and during the encounter, she has a high likelihood of destroying everything around her. So if you do it in your main base, you're gonna take a lot of damage. Defeating her gives the new ancient civilization core, which allows you to craft all the new recipes that are in the game. And you'll also instantly get a huge dark egg, which allows you to hatch your very own Bella Noir or Bella Noir Libero, which is an insanely strong pal to have. She is dark type, but she does have at the highest version of her. She has a unique passive, which gives 20 20% damage to both dark and ice. You can do a dual element. And like most pals in the game, she has her own unique ability or abilities. In this case, she has Nightmare Stare, which is this mega beam of death of darkness coming forward. And then she also has an Apocalypse Dark Tornado version, which fills the whole area with tons of tornadoes, and it's very good for farming. But the summoning altar wasn't the only new thing that's been added recently. The antique dresser can be added and very cheaply made in your base. Once crafted, you can run up to it and change your appearance. It basically just takes you back to the character creator and you can mess around and do all kinds of changes to your character if you want and make all kinds of unique changes. It's all just free to use. And previously on launch of Power World, it was very common to have mining bases that you would use exclusively for collecting ore. And now they've added ore mining sites as part of ancient technology. There's a small version of this and there's a mega version of it further down in the list that will allow you to have a major mine ore mining site. This will allow you to just farm ore in your base without having to have an ore collection location that you frequently go back to or use one of your main PAL boxes to farm that after. They also added an electric egg incubator, which can dynamically create the perfect conditions for an egg incubation. Homeward Thundercloud is like a hearthstone or a teleportation stone that allows you to just teleport to a nearby base. It can't be used in dungeons, but as long as you're not instanced, you're out in the open world, you can just freely teleport back to base. And they're not too bad to make. You just need to get Dazzy Clouds in order to farm them. They also added ability glasses, which are a huge addition to the game. These allow you to see the base IV stats for a pal. So if you've been breeding and 
trying to find the right stats for the best version of the PAL, you'll be able to see them on the PAL listed in the menu while you have these ab ability glasses. And they even added a Ring of Mercy accessory that you can craft, which is a pacifist ring, and this allows you to deal as much damage as you want to PALs, but you will never reduce them down below one. It is an inability, you'll just incapacitate them, you won't actually finish them off, you'll drop down to one HP, which is perfect for capturing PALs. It means that you can dismiss your PALs and do full damage to the target and then capture them when they're perfectly ready without worrying about accidentally killing them off. But having the ore mining site is a big deal because you will actually need a separate base to summon your Bella Noir fight and any new raid bosses that they add into the game. So you can just shut down your mining area and then put up a new mining site for ore in one of your bases and use that as the primary focus. And you'll want to be summoning and farming Bella Noir in all her versions anyways, because not only do you get the new civilization cores that you need for crafting, but you also, with the Libero version, will get special consumables that allow you to raise the stats, the IV stats of your pals. So with the ability classes, you can see what those hidden stats are, and then with the fruits that you get from the highest version of the raid, you'll be able to increase them permanently. So even if you have a pal that's not perfectly statted up, you'll be able to increase those stats to the maximum. But on top of all this for new content, there's been a bunch of quality of life improvements that have been on a long list of requests for the PAL World players since the game officially launched. If you walk up to any storage container, you can check the settings on that container and then filter what items can go into it, which means that you're able to dump items freely and sort them out. I have been doing this all along. I have chests for specific gear and for specific materials and specific items and things like that. I have everything organized, but I just sorted it out through a bunch of different chests. But now you can just go to it and say, this can't have ammo in it. And when you dump everything inside of it, the ammo won't go, which allows you to naturally sort out items so things don't get sorted. And also if anything drops when enemies die or you put things on the ground and pals will pick them up and move them, it means that they won't be able to put certain items into chests where they don't belong. On top of that, when you're crafting from a crafting station, you can allow your pals to transport items when they're done crafting away from the crafting station. So no more are you required to stand there and grab it and move it. You can actually have your pals remove it when you're creating things or creating materials or crafting crafting certain items, you can have them move them out of the crafting station so the station can be freed up. They've also updated more accessibility for PAL fluids and high quality PAL fluids. The Kelpsy PAL can now be placed into ranches and they will periodically drop PAL fluids. And the Demood PAL can be placed in ranches and they will drop high quality PAL oil, which means you're able to farm this without having to go out. It wasn't too much of a big deal anyways. You just go kill mammoths over and over and get tons of it, especially if you tripled the PALs in your world. But now you can have a way to dynamically and freely generate this with your ranch system. They've also updated it so pals will just over time remove their negative statuses while they're sitting in the pal box. If you have things that are sitting on your pals and you're waiting for them, you don't have to keep pulling them out and administering cures for it. Eventually, if they're sitting in the pal box long enough, the negative statuses will be resolved on their own. They've added in a multi-climate undershirt which erases both heat and cold resistance. This was super necessary because they had it so that you basically needed to use both versions for heat and thermal if you wanted to have the uh, both protection against cold in the frozen areas and heat in the desert areas. And you wanted to have this so you didn't have to keep swapping them out every time you changed regions. But they've added in a new version of it that is the multi-climate that you can find in dungeons and in boss fights, which allow you to have this in one slot and then free up the other slot for other accessories, which is super important since they added accessories and there's still good accessories that you can use to increase your stats and other things. They also drastically increased the drop rate for the high grade technical manual, innovative technical manual, and the future technical manual, which is how you get tech points to unlock things in the check tree. These used to be pretty hard to get. You would probably have to do maybe five or six dungeons to get one or two of them, and you have to do some boss fights. But now you can basically get one to two almost every single dungeon of various uh, qualities, and you'll be able to just get a bunch of tech points this way. It means maxing out your tech tree is a lot easier than it was before. And on top of that, they've also added in training manuals that will drop from dungeons and these allow you to store these up and you can just consume them on a pal to raise their XP without having to even d take them along with you. You just pop these training manuals on them and they'll level up real quick. They also made a 
nice change to the birthing of eggs inside of Power World, and that is when you use an incubator to hatch an egg, it actually has a chance to get the Alpha Pal status, which means that they can get that boost if you ever had pals that you farm as a challenge level boss or just the end of a dungeon boss or a world boss, they will have this Alpha Pal status, which allow them to get heightened stats. And now they've made it so that when you actually put them into an incubator and hatch them, they will have their own chance of getting this, which means you can hatch even better pals than you could before. Because realistically, having all of the best passive skills on your pal with max IV stats is still going to be better than having the alpha pal status, so now you have a chance to get both if you're really dedicated. On top of that, they also made amazing changes to the pal condensation menu. This condenser here, where you go and you combine duplicates of pals in order to raise their stats and their passive skill, which is super nice, their partner skill. The way it worked before is you would have to select a uh, target and then you'd have to go through and do each pal extraction one by one. So the first one is four, then 16, then 32 duplicates, and then eventually the 64 duplicates. And you have to do each one one by one and it was really brutal. And on top of that, once they were fully leveled up, you couldn't combine them with other ones to send that XP over. But they've done a bunch of really nice quality of life changes to this. Not only can you do partial condensation, so I can take this this uh, this uh, Lilene here, and I can take an extra Lilene, and I can do just a partial condensation, which means I can put her down, and now she has one more. I don't have to do all of it at one time. I can just do it as I go along. On top of that, you can also do it all at once as well. So if you want to do all of these levels and just keep duplicating and duplicating and duplicating, fill it up. It'll just go to the next level. So you can see now it's already on 32. I can grab these and keep filling, and eventually it'll just keep going. I don't have to do it one level at a time. I can do all of the PAL duplicates at once without having to worry about it. But on top of that, possibly my favorite change is that when you combine a PAL that already has advancement levels, these stars, with a PAL that doesn't, it will one for one duplicate that PAL star progress over into the new PAL. So I have, I have a whole bunch of these Lilines that are built for, uh, crafting medicine and doing farming and stuff like that so they have maxed out work speed but and you can see that she is currently this mega plant six is is three star we can take like a regular one that is not and put this on here and you can see that it will turn this lilene into a three star lilene because one of the versions that i'm putting into her is already level three and it takes all of the duplicate extracts that are in there as well and pushes it over which is great for a couple reasons not only is it useful for saving space and it means that you can kind of take these, uh, if you get a better version of one of the pals you already have, you can duplicate over the advancement, but it also means that you can be a lot more efficient with your pal box, since we don't know if we're going to be getting a bigger pal box or not. It means that you can take all of your duplicates and combine them down, even if the base pal is super weak or not good stats, you'll then be able to save up those duplicates into one pal, and then later on give that four-star pal to a better pal that you might be creating or breeding or capturing down the line. So all in all, good things are coming for Pal World, and a lot of them are already here. Some big new encounters for raids, some extra ways to make your life just way more comfortable, and a bunch of new content coming this summer and beyond to make the game even more interesting. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people, and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.